Rockwell Automation is releasing a new graphical user interface, a new software package that looks more like RS Logic Studio 5000, but for specifically the Micro 800. And it's called Factory Talk Design Workbench. And this is going to be version 1.0.0. We're going to do a first encounter video and I'm going to start looking at it and relating to you the differences between Factory Talk Design Workbench and Connected Components Workbench. Let's jump in. The first thing we're going to do is do what I did first thing. I went to Google and YouTube and I found basically a couple things on YouTube but the most interesting thing I found was on top there that it says upcoming scheduled for November 18 25 that's more than a week off this Rockwell doesn't have any videos on YouTube yet for factory talk design workbench but my friend and colleague Tim Wilburn does you th see the third choice down there Factory Talk Design Workbench versus CCW, that grade you actually want. So you can go watch that and get a, a pretty good idea. It's a comparison between CCW, Factory Talk Design Workbench, with throwing in some uh, Studio 5000. However, there's not much to be found on YouTube. That's why I decided to go ahead and make a video. If Tim's making a video on something I tend not to duplicate it. I'm going to jump in and give you my first look, but I'm going to do it more from a perspective of using this software to do the projects in the lab manuals that I sell, not conversion between different packages. The first thing you need to do is go to Rockwell Automation so you can download the software. And I'm going to pull in another window Actually, I'll just pull over just that tab. And if you go to www.rockwellautomation.com and in the search engine type in Factory Talk Design Workbench, and that's all, you will find your way to this page. And there's a button there that says Download Now. Go ahead and read the description and then download this software. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to download the software. I'm not going to show you how to download the software because all computers are a little bit different. But once you've downloaded this software, then I will show you what it looks like on my computer. Because I am going to shoot for connecting to Micro 800 controllers in the process of my first encounter with Factory Talk uh, Design Workbench. I realized I better go look and make sure that the controllers are connected, not just assume that they are. I opened up RSLINX Classic and I look here and I see the, the 12 point Micro 810 shows up as live. And if I go to Ethernet IP, I look and I see this is my workstation. I use my own network numbers because it's internal, it never gets connected to the internet. I always use 100, 100, 100 as my network, and then 255, 255, 255 sub subnet mask, which means that I have Ethernet IP connections of 100, 100, 100, basically one through uh, 250 something. I tend not to use zero and 255, one through 254. When I look down here through my controllers, I see an L20 QBB at 132 and I see an L50E 24 QBB at 133. The rest of these uh, are just what was temporarily there, the Guardmaster, CR30, Micrologix, etc. They're there in RS Lynx Classic. I'm going to close that and I'm going to open up Factory Talk Design Workbench. And now when I start poking around, at least I know that those three Micro 800s are actually there, electronically, electrically connected in to the system. Okay, we looked in RS Lynx Classic and we know our devices are connected and live. Um, I think for prudence sake, another thing that you want to do is 
to look at the documents that are available for Factory Talk Design Workbench software. If you go to uh, the literature library and type in Factory Talk Design Workbench, you'll come up with uh, at least the first three are relevant. But we've got an ebook. I've already looked at that. There's nothing in there worth looking at. There's a getting results guide. Actually, the getting results guide probably has the most information. Here's a 125 page manual Factory Talk Design Workbench Getting Results version 100. Back to our startup screen for Factory Talk Design Workbench. Since you're doing this from scratch, you don't have any projects to open or import. So we're going to select a new project. We'll give it a name and we'll call it First Project. Notice the box is, comes pre checked for Add Device on Creation. That way, when you click on Create, it comes up with a list of controllers that you can pick from. I have three controllers connected and I have a L50E24 QBB. I'm going to select that and we'll call the controller M850 rather than being clever. Now notice that it has 22 and 23 for choices. I'm assuming that with Factory Talk Design Workbench, it has to be a 22 or a 23. It can't be an earlier version. I'll just pick the oldest version, 22, to see what happens. Add. And we have it now added to our project. The first thing I want to do is try to connect. See over here, connection, unpin, collapse, close. That's so you can move this box on or off of the panel over here. I'm going to try to turn on that path. Okay, connection failed for the M850E. I'm going to make some guesses. I'm going to double click on the L50E over here and it comes up with something that resembles Connected Components Workbench. Port setting, auto negotiate, speed change, obtain address, IP address automatically. We don't want that. In the IP address, I believe, for that controller, I'm going to have to go back to RS Links since I don't have it open. Rockwell Software, RS Links Classic. Swing this over here, and the 850 is 133. 133, subnet mask. Now, it already has the address in it. I'm going to back out of this. I'm going to delete this project, and I'm going to go to Discover. Instead of New Device, Discover Device. And one thing I notice, and I'm still working on the issue, is I went in and created a DF1 driver, and I tried to configure it to the instructions in the user's manual for the USB port on a Micro 810. I was doing that. But with Ethernet IP, it comes up with all of the addresses that are on the network of 100, 100, 100, including the Micro 850E right here. I discovered it. Okay, now if I go look at the, well, that's interesting. I think instead what I'm going to do is see if I can upload I just it discovered it, but it didn't upload anything. I'm going to look around now for upload. So I'm going to go to the online center. And there's my appropriate address. That all looks good. I'm going to select it. And I'm going to upload. Now remember, I've never seen any of these pages before. Upload for one device failed. Because the programs are downloaded from Connected Components Workbench. Well... That means we probably have to do some kind of an import from the of the program that's in that 850 into Factory Talk Design Workbench. I think what I'll do instead is I will download, which means I'm going to wipe out whatever is in that controller, which no problem. Download success, build success, connect success. It looks like I'm connected. Th these two 
red X's down here. This was for when we tried to upload. Um, I'm going to go into global variables. Right at the top are the embedded outputs. Just for grins, I'm going to click the value on. And however, it's not going to do anything because I'm in the remote program mode. Remember, I've, I've not seen any of this before. I'm trying to figure out how to switch this without actually going to the controller. Okay, remote program. Not sure what I did there. Switch to remote run. Now, toggle that bit on. And sure enough, I'm looking over there and I see that output is on. And that output. I just completed a successful connection. I discovered the controller. Then I couldn't upload from the controller because it was the program that was in it was downloaded from Connected Components Workbench. I am connected and we did exercise an output when we were in the run mode. We're in the remote program mode now. If um, we go to run, if I click this, the light goes on. I'm looking at the trainer over there. You can't see it, but the light did go on for the output. It appears that this is our tool or our method of online, offline, remote run, program mode, etc. If I want to go offline, there's nothing to click that says go offline. Instead, you switch this slider switch over and now you're offline. And I, w I did consider going to CCW exporting a program and trying to import it. It wasn't successful. I decided to bail on that for the moment and instead do something simpler. If I double click on programs, nothing comes up because I didn't create any programs. So right click new program, give it a name, and I'll just call it first program. No description, and then the type is ladder, structured text, or function block diagram. We'll pick ladder diagram. Everybody's familiar with those. Create, and now we've got our first program. Double click on it, and there's our workspace. Now I'm looking for the instruction set, and down here on the side here, I see a toolbox. It looks like I can unpin it and it looks like you scroll down. This is very cumbersome. It looks like you can do a rung, branch around. I'll go back to common. I have a rung here. Now in CCW you could, okay, it, it opened a rung for me. When I grab that XIC, I call it true if on. This instruction is true if the bit in memory that it addresses is on, true if on. I'll drop it in there, and there's a question mark there. I'm not sure what's going to happen, but I will double click on it and type in, well, drop down a list. I don't see anything. No rows to show. I don't know what that is. What I want is to new variable. There we go. New variable name. I'll call it uh, n00 for input 0. Now I'm looking to alias it. Select data type. You could probably just type in a B. There's bull. I think it would have, you know, it would have been a boolean anyway. Dimension comment. Now this is all interesting. Let's see what advanced has to say. All of these elements are available in CCW, but they're in columns in like a spreadsheet. I'm not sure that I like this, but it's what we got to play with. So we're doing it. I create a tag and it did not put it in there. Expecting a bull type variable. What did I create? Select variable. I gave it a name of IN00 and I said it was a bull type. Select. And now it's in there. I don't know what happened on the first go. We'll do that again. We'll drag in another one. Right click. Right click. New variable. Name. IN01 for input 1. It's a bool. Create. But see, it didn't drop it in there. Create new variable. It didn't actually populate. If I go to select variable. Pick that. Select. Now it's in there. 
this this software looks kind of buggy but yeah i'm not real sure that i like this I, it's very kludgy and either i don't know what i'm doing that's very possible or it's just buggy we'll, we'll, we'll go ahead and uh, see what we can do with this now i'm going to do an ote and i'm going to go new variable only this time i'm looking for let me try scope micro 850 now this time i just hit the enter key instead of you know accept or okay i just hit enter and then it popped in there now i'm going to go back to this select variable i'm going to select that output now I'll change it to the output what i'm trying to do is alias select variable okay now here's where i put in the alias didn't like that i'm trying to type in an alias maybe i'm doing it backwards let's go grab another ote we don't want to do this in real life but new variable at a minimum this is not very intuitive i'll pick that hit and delete and i'm going to go back here and see if i can't turn some of these and i'm going to delete this one and i got a simple wrong and I'm going to download it. If I go to the online center, pick that, download, go to connection, I'm online, remote program, go to remote run, go to my first program, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to walk over and flip that switch on. And you can see, and you can see that I got it to do something. I'm not real excited about what I've done here, I don't know if you learned anything by watching this or not. Uh, you know, I watched Tim Wilburn do his intro, and uh, it's a good thing I watched him before I did mine, or what I just did would have been even worse, because I learned some things watching his. And my, I'm gonna I'm gonna go read the uh, the Getting Started Guide or whatever it's called to see if I can sort some of this out because, you know, I'm a conceptual teacher not a procedural person I don't memorize procedures or steps of a, of a system I learn the concepts and then I'm able to sort out that's what I've done here is I know what it's supposed to do and I know how it functions but I don't know the graphical user interface so I have to kind of hunt and peck but I did get a program in there and got it to do something that's something now I'm going to come back and do more of these after I've learned a little bit more Thank you for watching. I hope I didn't booger up your brain. I wouldn't be too put off by this first look or this first encounter by me. I always assume it's something I'm doing wrong if I can't get it to work. But my feel for it, it was awkward and clunky. I mean, I got thousands of hours with Rockwell software. I mean, thousands of hours. I even have quite a few hours with Connected Components Workbench. I started, I think, in version 7, and the most recent work in version 22. I have three volumes that I've written with lab projects, probably close to seven to 800 pages of projects I've created with CCW, and I know what's supposed to pop up. I totally was unable to find the Micro 810 inside of Factory Talk Design Workbench. I mean, I went out to uh, Factory Talk Links and I it showed up. I went to Rustling's Classic and it was there. But inside of Factory Talk Design Workbench, I could. I even went in and defined a DF1 driver as best I could from their instructions, and still couldn't find it. But don't be dismayed though. I'm gonna go to the manual and see what I can learn and then come back and do a second encounter having read. I, but what I like to do with software is, especially if I'm familiar with its function, is to see how intuitive it is, to, to see if I can just go in and start doing things and find my way intuitively. I did not. Might have been what I did or didn't have for breakfast. Anyway, see you in the next video.